Okay. So hi folks, everyone. Good evening, and I hope everyone is fit and fine. A very short introduction about myself. My name is Megha Mala, and I am working in the marketing team of Arity. I will be the moderator and host of this webinar. So now coming straight to, to the uh, little bit short introduction about Arity. It's a unified marketing automation platform. For the B2B business team, and our parent company is mainly Data AG Software Private Limited, which is a Bangalore-based company that started operation in 2015 with two major SaaS product platform. So our one of the product is EasySendy, which is mainly focused on SME and SMB business, and Aritik is mainly focused on customers from mid enterprise and enterprise. Around 2K plus companies across globe use both Aritik and EasySendy product platform. And from this year, January, we are getting deep into India and Asia market. A uh, very short introduction about Aritik Live, the live webinar series we are doing. So here we are trying mainly to bring professionals close to Aritik platform with Aritik Live. It is an online talk show for marketing, sales, business development, product leaders, and working professionals. Coming to a short introduction. Of of uh, the topic it's uh, the topic is inside the bias brain understanding from marketing so as we know over the past few years bias of professional service has changed significantly and as buyers everyone should know how to assess product service and providers in today's environment if you are changing with them your bias will leave you in short both buyers and seller sellers needed to know what's going on inside the bias brain in this webinar, if you will learn why there is so much friction between buyers and seller and what we can do it about it. So inside the buyer's brain, it equips you with a new perspective of the on the professional service marketplace. Once you understand what motivates your target clients and what mistakes to avoid, your firm will be having a new leverage and a true advantage in the marketplace. We have our, our esteemed speaker with us, Pradeep Unni, who is CEO and Principal Marketing Consultant. He is Marketing and Brand Strategist, Consultant, Award Winner, Advisor to World Brand Congress and Keynote Speaker. And with over 30 years of experience in branding and marketing for various products and services in different markets, he brings a sound understanding of the customer and an ability to translate that into winning strategies. His client this is across the country and some of the clients are abroad also. He and his team actively use data from different sources to get a clear understanding of our customer and thereby deliver strategies that succeed. So he is also an avid keynote speaker and had the pleasure of speaking on marketing and customer experience management at different forums as well as being advisor to World Brand Congress. He is currently working as CEO and Principal Marketing Consultant for Evoke Ideation. As a marketing consultant company, the organization works as the part of the client's team. The organization provides strategists, which is for also for also and manage the whole amount of activities that comes under marketing management. Over to the product. Uh, if you want to add something from your side. Nothing, nothing. Thank you very much, Meghmala, for that mm -hmm. uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, thank you all for, for joining me here to, to attending this webinar. Mm -hmm. um, we will look at uh, what what drives um, uh, professional services clients to, to hire a certain company or, you know, to what is, what is the relationship between buyers and sellers and professional services market nowadays. Uh, yes. Like Meghmala said, uh, the situation has changed a little bit over the past few years, ever since the pandemic uh, started, and uh, we will try to solve, talk about those those issues. I want to thank uh, Aritik once again for giving me this opportunity to speak to you, and I hope uh, well, we will have a short presentation. I don't have too many slides. Okay. Uh, after the uh, presentation is over, if any of you have any questions, I would be happy to take them. Uh, okay. I, I will request Pradeep uh, to start your presentation. Sure. I'll just uh, share my screen. Yes, 
Just give me a moment, please. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, hi, Pradeep. Welcome back. Yeah, that's okay. More problem with my sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Right. Uh, let me first start. I mean, uh, when I was given the topic for this today's uh, webinar, Inside the Buyer's Prayer Mind, and uh, with specific reference to professional services, I, I mean, uh, coming back from where I am, I'm as a marketing consultant. I have some background on on uh, on, on having sold to professionals uh, to to clients who are looking for professional services, and uh, I will share some of the read, some of these thoughts that I have, along with some findings that I have had got from the market. Let me start beginning with from here. There is a certain. Uh, hmm, when most people come to selling to, uh, to business, especially as professional services, there's a difference between what how we sell and what drives our customers to buy compared to what we see when we sell to customers themselves directly. That is, what is the difference between B2B selling and B2C selling? The okay. first, of course, is the understanding the need to buy. Now, when you sell to a... Uh, um, a B2B customer, he knows very clearly about why he needs to buy that product or why he needs to buy that service. His awareness is fairly high and he has different concerns when it comes to a, uh, because when you sell to a business customer, especially a professional services company, you are selling to people at different levels. In a bigger company, you would be selling to someone who is at a lower level then, then you know, uh, then then they probably the owner of the company himself, and his concerns with regard to whom he should take as a professional services services provider is different. Those are different com concerns that he has. The value of relationship. Now, this is something that is important in B two B selling, especially in professional services. That it it helps to have a clear relationship with who with with the, with, with your clients that that is more important in b2b selling rather than b2c selling in b2c selling many times it is just a one time sale but in b2b selling relationships matter a, more, a lot because that's where you can get repeat sales as well as repeat uh, reference uh, time is definitely important you have to have uh, it takes a lot more time to 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 to, to sell to a B two B customer than it does to, to sell to a B two C customer, mainly because they have the different protocols and you know their processes, and there are different hierarchy of needs. Now, the hierarchy of needs, I am sure many of you would be knowing about the hierarchy of needs. This was a theory set by Maslow sometime in 1920, basically for custom for the for the for the, for, for consumers. And uh, I'll just share the screen with you. This is the B2C hierarchy of needs as defined by Maslow in 1920, like I said. This is for consumers. Now, if you see the what, what Maslow said was when as, as a person's needs are met, when he goes from down from the bottom of the pyramid to the top of the pyramid, he, has, he will have different requirements. So at the physiological level, at the very base of the pyramid, a consumer requires physiological needs. He has physiological needs which include things like, you know, food, shelter, clothing. These are his basic requirements. Once that is met, his next level is his safety. That is when he starts thinking about his health, whether he should have a property, whether he should have employment, a steady source of income. This is his next level. 
at the third level he comes to starts thinking about his family about having a, a family having a community having being part of a society having friends that is his third level once that requirement is also met is when he reaches his next level which is esteem where he requires a certain amount of self respect he wants to have a status in society he wants to you know expect that a certain uh, product will meet his those those needs those that service or whatever it is will meet those needs and at the final stage is when he has self actualization which is he he wants to become what he they actually you know uh, deep down in his mind he wants to achieve for himself this is with regard to consumers this is what maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs was but when it comes to b to b customers especially let's say in a smaller or or a larger company the requirements are different people are different because you are talking to someone who is at lower level in the department he has he is he is in charge of you know purchasing the services at the very beginning at the, at the very start starting level his 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 expectations his needs are very different from what is going to go up upwards you know at different levels of the organization so i will um, uh, i'll just show you the b2b rrp of needs this is been this was um, um, propounded by seth gordon if you know seth gordon i think few years back he had propounded this rrp of needs for for b2b customers now this is specific to um, a company uh, let's say a small medium or or larger company where there are specified departments who are handling purchase and you know different functions at the very lowest level what an employee or or somebody who is involved in you know uh, taking on a, a vendor a supplier a professional services provider is that he wants to avoid risk he wants no he doesn't want any problem he doesn't want to have any any goof ups that's his basic requirement this at the second level he doesn't want to have any hassles he doesn't want to have to keep going back and chasing people and you know trying to chase his, his vendors try to get things done at the third level he wants to you know once the job is done he wants to gain power he wants to get the feeling that you know the job has been done it's my i have been able to complete this project it's my project at the fourth level he wants to gain respect that's when he wants the bosses to say that yeah yes, you did a good job and and you know because that lets uh, you you get you know the you get a promotion or whatever else and then you have to the next level he wants to have fun profit for him is the last thing he wants to think of that's because he is he's not it is not he's not the owner of the company he's not necessarily he's not the person you know who's 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 going to uh, worry about the profits he's worrying about other things that are going to come to him as he uh, as he as he takes on someone as a professional services provider in a smaller company especially in a small or medium business a very very small let's say let's say a very small enterprise the hierarchy of need is very different this is is something that um, i mean this is what i would think is the hierarchy for need for small business owner in especially his first and foremost requirement as a small business owner is that he wants to keep the business open he he has to avoid it being wound up so that is his primary primary worry his primary need and that is why he wants to bring in a professional services provider the second level he wants to do is grow he wants to grow his number of customers he maybe wants to add another branch that's that's his that's his next level at the third level he wants to avoid the hassle of you know having to you know worry too much about all these things he he um he wants to take have it have it simpler and at the fourth level he then thinks about his profit but at the very basic level his his requirement is to keep his business open that is his hierarchy of needs the reason why i'm bringing in the hierarchy of needs is as 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 um, uh, professional services uh, sellers the very first thing you need to do is is understand what your customers requirements are to understand that is your basic first step to get into to closing a sale this is uh, when we talk about the professional services client what are his major concerns today this was a bit of a research which was done in 2020 by a company called hinge research institute this was in the us the most of these 
things there are after the after the pandemic started so a lot of it is is applicable in india also i am sure you will see a lot of com, lot of um, similarities between the situation here to what has been you know what has been defined here the very the biggest worry that that company seem to have uh, when this research was taken was to finding and keeping good people that seems to be the b- biggest worry uh, i think we, we all have heard about you know people leaving their jobs and you know uh, the 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 beliefs that and the people who are resigning and going off that was a big worry so pe- keeping good people was a concern that businesses had strategy and planning issues were a pro concern again because with the pandemic coming the situations were changing very drastically companies didn't know uh, they were they were in situations which didn't which they hadn't encountered before they needed to have somebody who could help them out with the strategy and planning this was another issue that they had the third most important issue was finance and budgetary because again the markets were down uh, lockdowns were happening sales were not happening as much so depending on the industry budget and finance was a concern for for the next important concern for for b2 b uh, for the professional services client the next most important was maintaining quality and efficiency now you need leave lo- losing people when people are going definitely quality and efficiency maintaining it becomes a concern i think we have all seen how airlines are suffering nowadays and number of them uh, uh so it is it is a, a that is the next most important concern the last concern is the economy and the competition i think from in uh, once the poor pandemic started this was the condition that most most companies found themselves in most professional services most clients for professional services found themselves in so what 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 should professional services service providers you know professional service providers uh, do to 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 help their clients in such a situation uh since strategy and planning was one of the concerns that these come these clients had the professional service providers became more relevant than ever before to the clients that is a natural corollary of the situation that existed the first and foremost things like i mentioned before is to understand the client's challenges uh, a, a clear understanding of how the client is facing what is what is situations he is facing what does he want as a solution is the very first thing that a professional service provider needs to do show them how your capabilities can meet those then uh, can help them meet these challenges that is the next important thing that a professional service provider should do is to show how their own capabilities can help the client meet those challenges that is important now as we go along those changes those challenges changing today a uh, uh, a certain uh, you know an it uh, services client for example might have a certain challenge with regard to you know uh, putting together a network or whatever else it is and he might uh, and he might get an uh, service provider who can help them help him set up that network but a little further down the line he may have problems with security or keep keeping you know building a suitable firewall and stuff like that he might need to you know uh, his his challenges are changed with time so that's why it's important to to keep in touch with your client to 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 let him know about how your capabilities can meet his challenges because his challenges keep changing so that's a continuous process you can't just you know tell them about your capabilities once and expect him to remember it forever because most clients will tend to forget and it is better to keep at frequent times having discussions having talks keeping a collection keep keeping a building a relationship and keeping them informed about how what what all different services you provide what all different ways you can you know uh, serve the client so that he doesn't end up going to another service provider leaving you that is why because why because client loyal, loyalty is low at this point of time so you need to nurture your existing clients because if you don't nurture your existing clients he will move to someone's service provider who will who will give him the service that he requires in in the case that i provided in the example that i provided 
probably he would move to somebody else to give him the security, um, the network security requirements. And once you have a loyal customer, you also have a loyal client, you will get in the recommendations that are required. You, he will probably refer you to somebody else as a, as a, uh, as a for, for professional services. Uh, how do clients evaluate their service providers? Now, this is again coming from the research. This is something that we, uh, was found out. Most of the, um, the clients required their service providers to have a knowledge of the industry, to have expertise. That I think is, is a basic requirement. And I think most of us who are there in the knowledge, uh, in, the, in the professional services uh, sector, understand this, that you, if you are meeting Technology and data, this is more important for, I think, a lot of, lot of, lot of, across different services. For example, uh, it is definitely important for people who are in the IT professional services, uh, you know, IT service providers. It is important also for finance service providers in today's time to know, you know, to know which, which programs and how they deal and how the data is managed. It is important for, let's say, a, a, a provider who, who builds websites for, for companies. So technology and data is important. Competitive pricing is important. I think uh, budgets and finance were one of the concerns that companies have. So competitive pricing is important. We have to we have to be competitive with price. I'm not saying that you have to be the lowest technically in the market, but uh, the uh, services companies need to do Showcase knowledge and experience. I think if you want to build business, if you want to attract more clients, you have to showcase knowledge and experience. If you are expecting that you are you're specialized in a certain area, let's say you are looking to attract clients from a certain amount of in certain industry, because you have specialized in that industry, or you've done a number of jobs in those industries, it is important to showcase that knowledge and experience, either through digital marketing, through, through social media, through, you know, through your, through your website, through your blogs, through your articles. Let people know that you are uh, somebody who has knowledge about that particular industry and who is able to serve the client in, in this one. Because clients do their own research when they, when they, uh, when they appoint uh, uh, service providers. And a lot of them do, it, do, find, do find their uh, service providers from from digital marketing, from the from the from, from the web, so it helps. The second thing is get talented staff. It is necessary to have people who have. If you if you don't have it yourself, it, you need to have staff who will be who will who will give you the next who have who bring the next necessary expertise, who have the necessary qualifications, the necessary experience to help you sort out those those uh, you know to solve those challenges that you're. 